Welcome in to episode number three of the Just Another Chris Halloween Special, Season 2, 2021 edition. And in today's video, we're going to be learning about box cameras, or 600 cameras, versus SX70 or SLR cameras. There's some glaring differences with the two. We're going to learn about the specs, the pros, the cons of all of them, and see which one is best for you. So sit back, enjoy, let's dive on in. of box type cameras out there. They come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Some have little flip up flashes. Some have flashes that you install on the top of them. Uh, and they all tend to shoot 600 film. However, there are a couple of them out there in the early days that shot SX-70 film, but we're gonna focus more on the 600 film. We'll, we'll come back to that in just a second. For this video, I'm gonna focus on just a couple of the ones I have laying around, which I kind of have a few of them. And you may recognize this one. This one was in the first episode of last year's Halloween special. Uh, if you want to check out that video, there's a link in the description below. Box cameras are super fun. They're really cool. You point, shoot, take a picture, and then you see what you get. They're fun. I actually really don't dig the quality of the images that come out of this. It adds a kind of a unique look that I don't get in most of the other cameras I shoot with. So, I mean, I really, really like these. However, I am a bigger fan of the SLR cameras, and I know a lot of you guys are. They're kind of the premium and the most sought after cameras. And that is the SX-70 folding SLR cameras. You know, you pop them open, they're really nice. But for me, the major draw to this camera over like a box type camera is the fact that when you look through the viewfinder, you're actually looking through the lens. So you get to see exactly how the picture is gonna be framed. It's really, really neat. These guys, you don't. You look right off to the side. Right here, is, this is where I'm looking through. Here's the lens. I don't get to see through the lens, so I don't know exactly what the framing looks like. Now, the other major thing that SLR cameras have that box cameras don't have, that box cameras are fixed lenses, meaning it's focused at a certain set and that's it. And since you can't look through the lens, you don't always know exactly where that it's gonna be focused at. SLR cameras are not that way. You look through it and you can actually focus it. You can choose where you're gonna be focusing the, that lens and take your picture. So being able to see and be able to focus is a huge plus and a major draw. Yeah, these cameras mm, are awesome. You may notice that I accidentally dropped it the other day out of my pockets and it cracked the side open. I'm very sad, but it still works. So that's, that's a new thing. But anyway, I digress. Came alive, he tried to eat me, but I fought him off. <laughs> so one of the other differences is the lens itself. This is a plastic lens. This is a glass lens. Why does that matter? Well, glass lens is actually gonna be a lot sharper and crisper than a plastic lens. But does that mean the lens on this is bad? No, not at all, actually. In fact, this particular camera, the One Step 2, I actually get some pretty awesome, unique looks that even this camera can't do. But you will get sharper images out of this guy just because of that glass lens. The plastic lens, you're gonna get a little bit more soft, less sharp photos, but it lends its own unique look, like I was saying. It, it really just comes down to your preference. And honestly, if I put photos from these cameras next to each other, you're probably not going to be able to tell the difference right away unless you really, really know where to look. Now, the other thing is pretty glaring. This thing folds down pretty thin-ish. You can fit into your pocket, your backpack. It's a lot easier to travel with versus a box camera. Now, another thing you're probably gonna be wondering about is the film types. Now, this is an I-type camera, so it shoots I-type and 600. There's other uh, cameras out there, like this guy right here. This is a 600 camera. It's basically the same one as this one, uh, but it uses 600 film only, uh, and it just one looks pretty freaking cool. But these cameras shoot SX-70 film. Uh, what's the difference, you may ask? Well, that is the ISO, or the ASA, 
of the film. The sensitivity of the film. This is 600, which is actually 640. ISO 640. This is an ISO of 125, I believe, uh, which is not very fast, which means you have to shoot this camera in really, really bright sunny day or with a flash because that shutter is going to be staying open for quite some time and you can get some blurry images otherwise. There are only two cameras out there that Polaroid put out that use 600 film in an SLR. And of course, I'm talking about the SLR 680, AKA the beast. This guy has it all. It has a flash, it has autofocus, it has SLR capabilities. So you look through the viewfinder and you are gonna see what you can take a picture of. And he shoots 600 film natively. Really, really cool camera. Uh, very, 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 very expensive camera. If you can find one, they're kind of sought after uh, and can range anywhere from $500 to $1,000 depending on condition. However, there are a couple other options out there. If you are looking to get one of these cameras and want to shoot 600 film, you can still shoot 600 film in this camera. You just have to use an ND filter over the pack of film to where it basically turns it into SX70 film. It will still operate at the same shutter as if you were to use regular SX-70 film, so it's still kind of slow. The second option is you can actually send your camera in and be converted into a 600 camera natively. And that's what this one is. This shoots natively 600 film, so you don't have to worry about it. Plus, 600 film is a lot easier to find than SX-70 film. There's a few websites out there you can actually do it from, and I will link some in the description below. And I'm thinking about doing a video exclusively on converted cameras with a particular company, so if you're interested in that, consider subscribing. There are a bunch of options you have when it comes to SLR cameras. For instance, this one is a sonar, which means autofocus. So you look through the viewfinder, you push the button, it will automatically focus for you and take the picture. There are base models without that, which I do have one, which is really nice because it's a little smaller and you can fit in your pocket a little bit easier. The other 600 camera that Polaroid did put out is this SLR 690. It's the same thing as the 680. It just came out in the 90s, in case you were wondering. Box cameras now, on the other hand, there are hundreds of options you have for this thing. They stopped making the SLRs in the 90s and then just focused on these guys. Polaroid wanted to put out a camera that was a lot more affordable because these guys were really expensive back in the day. Uh, these, you do have more control over the exposure uh, because you have exposure compensation. I believe it's up to four stops of exposure compensation. I think that's how that one works. Over here, the box cameras, you, most of them, you only get plus one or minus one. With the exception of the uh, Polaroid One Step Plus and the Polaroid Now Plus, uh, if you use the app, you do get a little more option over the exposure compensation, but you have to use your phone. You can't just push a button. Plus, box cameras tend to always have a flash built right in there. The SLR cameras don't. You have to either add a little uh, adapter on top of it for a flash, or if you have the cash, you could get an SLR 680 and it has the flash built in, but you're gonna pay a lot of money for it. These also tend to be a lot cheaper than these guys. These guys range all over the map. Uh, depending on where you go. Base models of these can be $100 all the way up to, like I said, $1,000 depending on the type of one you're buying. These guys you can go on like Craigslist. Is Craigslist still a thing? I don't even know. But Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, eBay, Amazon. You can find these for like 20 bucks like on Facebook Marketplace, like all day long. And if you're using the new iType cameras, new, is it new? It came out in 2016. But if you're using the iType cameras, the film is a couple dollars cheaper over 600 type film. Now, if you are going to go this route and you don't want to convert your camera, you're looking at SX-70 film, uh, you can't really buy that in stores unless it's a dedicated photography video store, like maybe b and I, I actually went to B&H in New York last year and I was able to find two packs of it uh, locally there. But most stores don't stock it. Target, uh-uh. Best Buy, nope, not gonna happen. Walmart, no, nah, never. Uh, 600 film all day long, everywhere you can find that stuff. Polaroid.com is the only place really you can uh, get SX-70 film regularly. So, I mean, I would go away from that route. There are, like I said, a couple box cameras out there that do shoot SX-70 film, uh, but they're the early, early ones and uh, I would stay away from those in my opinion. The way to tell what your camera shoots, all the cameras are gonna say this when you open it up in somewhere in the film door, like on this one, it shows down at the bottom here, the film type it uses. It uses iType and 600 film. Pay attention to that. Now, this is kind of its own category, but I will mention it. Um, I kind of mentioned it already in this series, but let's dive in a little bit more to it. And that is the iType specific box cameras. 
that has over SLR and 600 film cameras. And that is the fact that they tend to get all the really cool film, like the special frames. For instance, the Stranger Things film. So if you're into that sort of thing, maybe I pick up an iType camera, box type, and you'll get all the cool fun frames like Stranger Things or Star Wars. I think they did a Snoopy's one. Uh, there's a few of them up on uh, the website you can buy right now. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind as well if you're interested. But if you remember from the previous episode of the Halloween special, 2021 edition, I taught you how to use that fun special frame inside these SLR or other 600 cameras. So if you want to check out that wizardry, be sure to check the link in the description below for the previous episode. Durability. On the box cameras, they're all plastic. SLR cameras, most of them are metal. Not all of them, but this thing's all metal, except for the sonar, which doesn't make any sense. It's plastic. What the heck? The SLR 680 and 90, they're actually all plastic too, which doesn't make any sense. So this might be something for you guys that don't know. 600 film has a battery inside the film pack. So that, that operates the cameras. Because back in the day, these didn't have any sort of power to actually take a picture. So each time you put a film pack in, it powered the camera. So you always had juice. You always had power, always had something ready to take a picture. You don't have to worry about the camera dying on you or whatever, right? Super nice and handy and, and, and super convenient. However, it's not great for the environment to be throwing you know, batteries away in the trash. So that introduced the new iType film. The cameras now have batteries inside and you can throw in film packs without batteries in it. So you're not being so wasteful. Uh, pros and cons to that. Maybe one day the battery in this goes out and now your camera can't be used. That's why the older cameras are still going because there's no, there's, it operates no matter what. Cause the new battery goes inside. So it's something to keep in mind as well. So which one do I recommend you getting? Well, it depends on your style and your level of commitment to you know, shooting film. For me, I tend to lean more towards SLRs. As you guys already know, um, I love SLR cameras, mainly just because I can look through the viewfinder and see what I'm taking the picture of. I can be a lot more creative with this, in my opinion, as far as framing. Choose my focal plane. It's just really, really nice to be able to do that. But if you're just starting out and you've never shot any sort of Polaroid before, I would go with the box cameras. One, because you can find them pretty cheap. Two, they're super simple to shoot with. If you have any further questions, please leave a comment below. I would be more than happy to answer that for you. Or if you just want to chat. And be sure to check back tomorrow for the next episode of the Justin and the Chris Halloween Special Season 2, Episode 4. We're talking lenses. Yeah. Lenses for Polaroid SLR cameras specifically. Yeah, telephoto, super wide angle, fisheye, all that good stuff. Macro even, shall we? Lots of good stuff. If you don't want to miss it, I'll see you there, guys. Now get out there, make some art. Stay away from Demogorgons. They're usually right behind you. <laughs>